Business Hackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm the Lead Technical Advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a Manager of Developer Advocacy with the Cisco Developer Relations Program. Welcome to Episode 80 of Snack Minute. Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool projects that we work on. And on today's episode, we have Hank Preston. Hank, do you mind introducing yourself? Ah, it's always good to reintroduce yourself. So Hank Preston, I'm a principal engineer with learning and certifications, and I uh, I enjoy talking tech and any opportunity to talk with my buddies, Kareem and Matt, about whatever is uh, kind of top of mind for me. It's, it's always a, a great chance to be here. So thanks for having me back. Yeah, knowing you, you always have a couple of things that are top of mind. So can you uh, clue us in into what you're talking about today? And so I was working on kind of um, the the templates for our firewall configurations that would stand up the just the basic configuration, right? Kind of how can I get routing functioning as, as well as interfaces that were in there. And I got stuck because even though all the configurations looked right, um, routing just wasn't happening the way that it was supposed to. And so I, I mocked up um, kind of a, another sample network here to kind of highlight the issues that I ran into. And so as an example, so I'm on an ASA firewall here. And so if I do a show route, you'll see I don't have OSPF routes. Those would be indicated by like an O in the line that's here. So you'd see O. Oh, this needs your connected routes, L's or local uh, locals. If you look at them, you can see those are like the IP addresses on the device. The C's connected routes, those are the, the actual network interfaces that are there. But I expect to see, or I expected to see a whole bunch of OSPF routes. And so as an example, if I, I'll spawn another terminal here, we'll connect to one of the routers so we can see what, what's over there. So if I go Telnet, let's see if I can remember the, the address, 10, 10, 21, 74, four, I think. Yeah. So this is the router that's connected to that ASA firewall. So if I do a show um, IP route here, oh, uh, Here's where the, the VS code and the size of my terminal gets a little weird there. That's easier to see. So you can see in here, all of these O routes represent OSPF routes. And those are supposed to be up at my firewall. Like, that's what I expected to see, but they're not there. And so I started and I went back and said, okay, well, what's not working? Um, and so the, like a good network engineer, I start with just spot checking the config. So show run uh, router. And we can see, okay, it's a very fairly basic configuration for OSPF, right? Router OSPF, the network is here. So where are we going to advertise and connect and the pieces that are in place? And so there's other show commands you can do. So show, um, I think it's the commands on a router or a firewall are slightly different. Can't type, there we go. Uh, neighbor. So we look at neighborships. Okay. So this was the first thing I went into and I said, okay, well, I'm, it's neighborships are starting to go. Routing protocols have, you have to establish a relationship with the other routers so you can pass things back and forth. And so I can see traffic happening, right? I can see things are starting to kind of build up in the, the, the way they're supposed to. Um, OSPF, these should come up in kind of a full kind of uh, a full state that indicates like routing has happened. So there's just something not right in here um, that's preventing this relationship to go back and forth. And so it, it, I sat back for a second right in my chair and I was like, okay, got to go back to fundamentals. Like what does it take to get OSPF neighbors to kind of build amongst themselves. Uh, I'll ask uh, Kareem, you and Matt, I know that you, you guys don't necessarily have a, a deep networking and routing background, but what are some of the things you might think about as, as you're presented with this or any of the, the experience you've had? Probably the links that are connected between the devices, right? I would look at which, which port is connected to where and why they're flopping there. If it's, if it's an actual physical issue, I'll start with that. Layer one, two. Yeah, that's a thing. That, yeah, I, I, that's one of the things that I think is important with troubleshooting to remember is those OSI layers are really helpful often, right? Stick with them, right. stick with the basics, right? Rule out the easy stuff before you work your way up. And so we could do things like, like checking. So if I did a show run, my interface gig, zero one is the inside one. Yeah. So my, my IP address on this guy is 172.16.253.4, and it's on that side. I think that the um, the router is probably not one, maybe, so we could try to ping. So ping 72.16.253.1, maybe two. 
Let me go look because I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head and I don't think I've got it right. Show IP interface brief. Uh, it looks like it's a dot three. Oh yeah, it's great. It's great. They, I, I'm less stressed because I actually know the answer in this case. Those are always much easier. So there we go. So I can I can ping between the ASA and the firewall. So traffic is in there. We only got a few minutes, so we'll kind of I'll walk through these. One of the things you learn as a network engineer as you're going through kind of routing protocol setup is every routing protocol has to have certain certain attributes match in order to build a routing relationship. EAGRP has a th set of things that have to match, OSPF has them, BGP. Like there are always these things you have to remember. And and that's where you have to go to. That was the fundamentals I had to stick myself back into and be like, okay, well, what are the things that OSPF has to match that's in there? And it's like, okay, the IP address and the subnet mask are a common one to go through. So you could have a case where, remember, I could have maybe a misconfigured subnet mask on one side. So you can look at things like that. So this is a dot two forty eight. If I come over here, um, show run interface gig zero. Oh, here we'll just do it this way. Show uh, IP interface gig zero 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 one. All right. So it's a slash twenty nine. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I won't put you on the spot. The slash twenty nine and the dot two forty eight. Those are the same. Right, so those those match up. So those are in good shape. But like those are the types of things to go through. And in this case specifically, the problem um, isn't the IP address. Um, one of the things that we always have as network engineers are debugs. So that's another good fundamental skill to remember if you're troubleshooting. So I can do like a debug IP OSPF adjacency. And this is actually, if I remember right, this is where I went to and went through and said, okay, well, what's what's the issues? And so debugs, I already had terminal on. Debugs are great ones to go through and look. And if I wait long enough, we'll actually see let me, uh, where the error starts to come in. So this is the one that we that that points at the issue that I was having in this case. OSPF is one of the, the routing protocols, one of the few where MTU size on an interface links have to match. You can't build an OSPF relationship, a neighbor relationship, if you've got different MTU sizes in your network. Um, there are other good reasons not to want different MTU sizes in your network, but OSPF actually looks for that as part of kind of building a neighbor relationship. And it's a hard one to come back to because there's no obvious things in like some of the, 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 the default show outputs you go to. So the show IP neighbors, right? They show them coming up and down, which is weird. You can ping between them. So MTU problems don't cause ping issues. Um, it comes down to kind of remembering those fundamental skills. While while I was uh, studying way back when I was attempting my CCNA, um, one of the things that I questioned myself is like, why is this information relevant? Like, what, what am I going to know the, the different layers or why do I care? I'm probably going to be playing at like layer four or five or whatever, right? And, you know, you actually don't think about it while studying, but in practice, all of the bullet point points that we have in our certifications are actually valid for the industry and what we do um, outside in, in the day-to-day -day life as a network engineer. Yeah, and to the point that you were making, or, or both of you were making when, when talking about this, is that moving up and down the stack um, has its certain requirements. And if, if a layer isn't working, um, we have to figure out, someone has to figure out where that is. And thankfully that uh, you guys are there, because when we talk about network automation, or automation and programmability, we're abstracting a number of layers out of that. Um, and, and things like this, um, you know, kind of fall by the wayside. And, and so to, I, I can't agree more with you, Hank, about that assessment that making sure that we remember the fundamentals or remember where to uh, attain the information on those fundamentals is, is actually very key. And it's, a, it's actually really relevant too, if, if you think about it, Hank, like you wrote a block series around container networking, right? Which is, you know, we're playing at layer seven, if I'm not mistaken. And so your fundamentals from networking do apply in the cloud as well. So it's yeah. not like, it's not like OSPF is going to go away and you're not going to, you don't need to understand routing. You do need to understand routing. You're just applying it into different application as opposed to talking to the box. Now you're talking at a container level, but you need to understand how to route the network from a container out. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, that was that was a big part of in that that blog series I recently did a little bit of Linux and then into the containers is that whether it's container networking or cloud networking, 
networking concepts are still networking concepts. You still have to understand appropriate IP addressing. You need to know the difference between bridging and routing. Um, how do you actually pass traffic back and forth? And even if it happens in a container world or in a cloud world, those fundamental networking skills are still needed. Now, granted, there's there are all sorts of layers of software and abstraction that for many users kind of make it so that you don't necessarily have to pay as much attention on a day-to-day and like project by project basis, but they're still there under the hood. So if if folks are are out there and want to do a brush up on OSPF or routing, or maybe you're still learning your own routing pieces and wondering if they're important, they definitely are. They don't go away. Um, inside of the this our, the the Cisco certifications related to CCNA and CCNP, your enterprise core, your enterprise routing and architectures, like there's super deep material in there that'll help you with it. And then we also found um, an OSPF troubleshooting example on Code Exchange over on DevNet that kind of helps drill through some of these pieces. And those are great utilities to leverage if you ever find yourself kind of dealing with one of these situations. Um, so on that note, th- Hank, uh, unfortunately we're out of time. And so we really appreciate you uh, a having this awesome conversation about, um, focusing on the fundamentals, specifically looking at, at, uh, how we can potentially tr- troubleshoot, uh, OSPF. And I know I won't forget to look at the MTU values, uh, for the interface and snackers. Uh, we hope you found some value in this and we'll catch you next time on the next episode of snack minutes. Thanks Hank. And thank you snackers and snackers for a chance to win. Us, our cybersecurity giveaway. Um, check out the link on that video, and you have a choice to enter uh, cybersecurity to win uh, a, a voucher for our cybersecurity uh, associate, professional, or CCNP security. So check out the link and go enter that giveaway. Wow, that's a big deal. Yeah, you're an MTU, Matt. <laughs> you're an OSPF. <laughs> <laughs>